Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna. I'm Tiffany. This is my sister. We are here in Hawaii yet again, bringing you another delicious fermentation recipe. We are gonna be making something that is typically pickled. It's a Southern recipe and it is called chow chow. Uh, we are gonna be making this, it's generally like a harvest type of recipe. It's not really, most people use whatever they want. And, but this one is gonna be cabbage, uh, bell peppers, tomatoes, onions, garlic, and corn. And we're just gonna mix it all up together, chop it up, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna bring you guys in close so you can see it because we're off grid here at this lovely place and the power's out right now. So we are with a window right here. So the lighting's gonna be kind of weird. Bear with us on this one, but I think you guys can see us okay because we are right up in front of the lovely bay window overseeing the ocean. I'll insert a clip of it and it's beautiful so you don't see me making these weird gestures. So, uh, <laughs> we're insert gonna- clip here. <laughs> yep. So anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna angle this down a bit so you can see everything that we're chopping up and then we will bring you back up and see our lovely faces for the next step. Okay, so we have our half a head of cabbage. We're gonna put it in this bowl. We're gonna cut it up into like, pieces like this right there and i will link this recipe below it's from fermentationculture.com i will link it down below so if you're interested in it definitely look that up so she's just cutting these into some strips and then we're gonna put it in here add the salt uh, massage it a little bit and let it set for a little bit a little while calls for kosher salt we don't have kosher salt so we do I don't want to use this. Okay. So we're we have kosher salt, but we're gonna use this. And it's two tablespoons. You just put it on there. I usually put it on like half on in the beginning and then half on once or in, like halfway through the cabbage and then the other half at the end. But it doesn't matter one little bit. Hi honey. Hello! You've come to You're watch the show, huh? Right <laughs> no, you fine. Yeah. Awesome. Have fun. Don't forget your helmet. Make sure he knows how to do it. Yeah. Have fun. So then you just kind of massage it in so that the salt can start breaking down the cell walls of the, of the sauerkraut or of the, um, the cabin. You just kind of squeeze it while you're mixing it. You don't have to do it a lot. You can sit here and do it forever. Like you can see it's already starting to glisten because we're pulling the moisture out. <gasps> One for the homies. Blooper. I don't know if you can tell, but it's uh, it, 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 it goes, gosh, it goes very quickly when it, you're breaking it down. It just, the salt goes to work very, very quickly. And that's why you don't really need to need to sit here and knead it a lot. Like you can just start the process and then walk away for like a half an hour. Oh gosh, that's my foot. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this a towel on top of this. And while this is sweating, we're gonna cut up the rest of the ingredients so we're ready to go as soon as the half hour's up. How long does that sit? 20 to 30, 30 minutes. minutes. So we're just going to so cut up the rest of it. Corn, onions, peppers, garlic. So I'm just going to cut up these three peppers. Oh, it's saying that's only half a pepper, so it's going to be a lot when you put it into you know, a measuring cup. Yeah. It's actually a lot. Okay, so we'll just have some leftover and we can make chili or something later. Do you have a measuring cup? Yeah. So we're just gonna cut these up into like quarter inch diced cubes. You don't have to be exact with this, but considering the fact I can't stand bell peppers. I'm not going to go over there. <laughs> I'm going to use red or orange or yellow or orange. I don't know what's going on in here. I don't know. 
I feel like that's gonna make a really good blooper though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, those drawers are stuck. <laughs> it's a meat thermometer. You fixed the problem by spreading it. Oh, it's a meat thermometer. You said you didn't have a thermometer. Well, that's because it's stuck in the back of the drawer. There's a really valid point. It's almost like you knew it was there. <laughs> Oh, this is a lot of bell peppers. I guess we're gonna have a little extra, huh? That's just a half cup. Yeah, it's supposed to be a half cup. Okay. So we'll just use this much. And the rest of this, I don't want to use. Or do I? I don't want to waste it. The ratio is gonna be pretty off if you keep doing that. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cut up half. You can it later. Okay, yeah, I'll just stick it with this. She can hold it. Dip it in some dressing or something. I'll grind on it later. You just put all the extra ingredients in here, right? Mm -hmm. And all the ingredients, normally when I'm cooking, I use, um, or normally when I'm fermenting, I try and get organic ingredients, but it's what they had, so this is what we're using. I don't think anything here is organic at all. Um, which is totally fine, as long as if you're putting any kind of water in it, you need to make sure that you're using, oh, the chili powder's organic. Um, as long it, as- it, it is local though, the corn, and the tomatoes and the onions are local. Yep. Which is kind of a big thing here in Hawaii. Well, considering how far it has to trek, if it comes from literally anywhere but Hawaii, that makes sense. <laughs> and I did have one of their local steaks that was really bomb diggity. Okay, so anyways, when you're fermenting, like if you can do organic, you, you probably want to. But that's the nice thing about uh, lacto-fermentation is that the actual lactic acid breaks down any kind of Roundup or any kind of uh, fertilizer that might be on it, on the fruit itself. So if you can only get non-organic produce, fermenting it is a great way to consume it because it gets rid of all that crap. Mm -hmm. So now we're just gonna let the uh, the cabbage continue to sweat and then we'll bring you guys back when we're ready to mix it all together. Well, you're back. It's been probably at least a half an hour, right? At least a half an yeah. hour, probably an hour. We were out there chilling on Instagram for a while. <laughs> so we're ready to make the final step of making the, the actual ferment mixture. You can see it's kind of broken down. You can see the water in there. And we're ready to put the rest of the ingredients in here. So we have a uh, half a cup each of corn, um, red peppers. It calls for orange peppers, but we did, or green peppers, but we put orange instead because we didn't have it. To, uh, Roma tomatoes and onions. And then we have, what was that, four cloves? Four large cloves of garlic. Yeah, we like it garlic called around for two, here. but we said four. Two's not enough for anything. Okay, so we're just gonna dump all these in here. Hands are washed. Clean hands, clean heart. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. You no. never heard that before? No. Now Tiffany needs to gonna go ahead and knead all this stuff up for us. Ooh. What about the chili? Oh, chili flakes, yeah. My smashing. Squeeze it. Squeezing. You don't need to like manhandle it, but you know, you're kind of mixing at this point. It looks delicious. Oh, it does. I think that's probably why they called for the green pepper, was for aesthetics. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing, I didn't realize the tomatoes, otherwise I would have used uh, the yellow bell peppers just for a bit of a different color. It's beautiful. It's a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flake. Or you could do a jalapeno instead. Oh, I like your idea. So. Plan change. We're not gonna use this. We're gonna do a jalapeno. We're gonna oh. put some jalapenos in here. So pretty. Okay, so we're, let's do two jalapenos. Do we want it to be kind of spicy? Yeah. Okay. There's plenty of leftover for the other one. Yeah. 
You get it the seeds? Why not? I like seeds in it. Let's do what we're doing, man. On the heat, right? That might be one way to get that to experiment with snacking on fermented foods. He likes spicy. That's what that's how I got Robert to, to enjoy it. Like he'll he'll try any of the any of the hot ones. He really likes the uh Sweet, it was a sweet pepper jalapeno from it. Oh yeah, that would be to me. He really liked that. Scott likes chips with various dips and spreads. He likes to put um, different spreads on toast sometimes. Mm, like, like jalapeno jellies and stuff? Yeah, his mom made some, or his mom's friend made some spicy. I should send you guys, I, ha I made some cowboy jelly or cowboy candy. It's uh -huh. like a, it's it's not a jelly, but it's like, it almost is. Like you could even add more pectin to it and it probably would turn into a jelly, but it was really tasty. Right before I left, Robert and I did the tasting video of it and it was really good, really yummy. These are what his, his mom's friend, cherry, cherry hot, hot and sweet. sweet. Cherry hot and sweet. Shout out Dottie Summers if you're on here. Heck yeah, she will be now because you're going to tell her about it. Yeah. And cherry heat jelly. I've got quite a few of these empty jars because it's been a while due to COVID that we haven't been able to travel to South Carolina to grab some of these bad boys. Okay. So now we're just going to mix it in. It's just beautiful, beautiful colors. Don't touch your eyes. Yeah. Or your nose. Oh, that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So next step, we are gonna pack our jars. We might need a third one. Now that I'm looking at this, I feel like we might need a third one. So if we do, we will grab a third jar. Just time to start packing it in there. You put it in and I'll pack it. How about that? How about that? How about that? Ooh, nice and liquidy. That's what I'm aiming for. You really want to pack it in there um, to get all the air bubbles out. And you can fit more in a jar. <laughs> oh, I wish you had a trout pounder. You need to get a trout pounder. Though. You know, my birthday is next week. It is. You should tell Scott. <laughs> Cause I flew here, so Wait, that's what that's that, my birthday present. What day to me. is it? It's Sunday. Your birthday's on Wednesday, right? Oh, I forgot. With you being here, I legit like kind of forgot. <laughs> that's weird. So you don't need a crop pounder. You can just use a, a blunt end of a, any kind of a tool. Just make sure it's clean, you know. You don't want to go grab something out of the shop and, <laughs> and whatnot, but. Okay, that's it for that one. For now. Hey, we're gonna have some liquid left over in the bottom because of this oh, yeah. tool that I decided to use for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going, to, I'm just continuing to pack it in there a little bit more. I'll wait for you so you can do that. Oh, there's oh, plenty of liquid in yeah, there. Yeah, no, you just push it in that. That's all that the salt does, it does that. And then also like the tomatoes and the corn, they have, corn a, lot of, they have a lot of liquid, so. Oh, that looks divine. I just want to eat it right now. I kind of do too. <laughs> we're gonna have to try it after we're done. Maybe we won't just work through a jar. <laughs> <laughs> Is the headspace on that one good or do we need to add a little liquid to it? No, it's good. Might, might want to add a little liquid once we cover it. The, the topper. What are we gonna use for topper? Just the cabbage? We can do a cabbage, but we can also just do an onion peel. Oh yeah. I think okay. an onion peel would be easier. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this, we're just gonna take this onion. You can use whatever topper you have on hand, whatever is convenient to you. We might actually have to do a cabbage too. <laughs> I don't think there's enough peels here. Okay, but this one, this one's fine. You take this, right? Let me see, make sure you can see me here. And you're just gonna cup it as best you can around the ingredients in the jar to kind of hold it in, right? 
So you're going, you're cupping it as best as you can. I have a lot more onions over there. Okay, I'm going to get them. I'm having a hard time getting it to, there's so little onions, it's hard to get them to go around it. But it's best if you can do that. There we go. And if you use the onions as the topper, you can also use just a sour, uh, leaf of the cabbage. But this adds even more flavor to it, I, I think. But you can use either. Or should we find? Oh, that's all the ingredients. That's all of it. We almost got three jars, so I'll probably take, take this one home with me. Because it'll be easier to travel with. I think for most of these, we're just going to be using this as the topper. We just need to make sure that it's, it's best. This method, it works really well with these narrow mouth jars because you have this shoulder that helps to keep this stuff under. If you're using the totally straight sided, like pint jars, um, it's, there's nothing for it to grab onto. So it's a little more difficult to weigh stuff down. Mm. Where's my onion? So this one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna travel with this half empty one because I'm traveling back to Washington. You can have this as early as four or five days. Um, honestly, even after like three or four days, but I don't like it like that. I like to make sure that it ferments for a long time so it can really just develop the flavors. I think it makes it delicious. And especially if you're fermenting in a place like here, like in Hawaii where it's very moist, it's very uh, mold prone and humid. yeah and it's very humid and hot you need to make sure that you're keeping it in as cool of a place as you practically can um and that being the ideal temperature for fermenting something is in my opinion 65 to 70 degrees that's ideal that is where it's going to be a low and slow ferment it's not going to get too hot too quick and if it gets too hot it will ferment very quickly or it'll mold very easily and it doesn't develop as many levels of, of flavor and it'll create a much more um, umami flavor if you ferment it low and slow. So what we're going to do, I need a little more water for this guy here. You want to make sure that all your ingredients are under the water. As time goes, you might lose some water from here. So you need to make sure you're keeping it replenished. Sometimes it'll pour, like one like this where the water level's here, not super likely that it will overflow. These ones are a little more likely that they'll overflow, but it's not a huge deal. It's just pushing the ingredients. It's filling it up with, it means it's working. It means it's activated. And it also works with the moon, like any other body of water. Um, so sometimes when the moon is in the right cycle, it can overflow because it's pushing the water up. It's expanding the water. So um, basically, you just want to make sure you're getting all the little particles. I don't see any in here. They're all covered. So what we're going to do, we're going to cover these with these. This is a great use for your leftover spent lids after you can. Um, we just didn't have any clean ones on hand, so we're just grabbing some new ones. But you can totally use the other ones. And what you're going to do is you're going to come through. You're going to tighten it, you know, I'd say a little more than fingertip tight. You can also leave it on there loose. But with the mold tendency around here, I just feel more comfortable just coming through and burping it. So what we're gonna do, I tightened it a little more than fingertip tight. Every day, we're gonna come through and we're gonna do, we're gonna burp it. And that's where we come through and you open it and close it. And you'll hear it, if it's active, you'll hear a little hiss. Yeah, like you can, it's gonna build up carbonation in here like a soda. So you're gonna come through you're gonna burp it every day. If it's really active, you'll be able to see how active it is. Based, It's generally based on the freshness of your produce because the fresher the produce, the more active the bacteria is that is on them. And so they're gonna to go to work really, really quick. Also with these, I don't, I've never fermented this much with non-organic produce. So we're gonna find out together how well this works. It's not super hot here today. It's not super hot all week. It's kind of low 70s, I think. So I don't think this is gonna to go too fast because she's super new to fermenting. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this with her is to kind of get her a little more comfortable with fermenting because she has similar gut issues that I have, which is why I do the ferments and I think it'll help her a lot. And she also just likes the flavor of all the pickled stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna quit yammering and I will see you guys back here when I see you back here. But it's not gonna be here, it's gonna be in Washington. Welcome back. We are ready to give our chow chow a taste test. 
I, my sister sent me a Marco Polo, whatever you want to call it, and she was taste testing all three of these ferments and she, the three ferments that we made in Hawaii. So this is going to be one of them. This is the second one. And so she was not a fan of this. She said it got quite mushy. So I think that if mine is mushy, I'm going to try this one again. So stay tuned. Um, but I'm not going to do the whole process. Basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a higher ratio of cabbage to vegetables and I'm probably not going to ferment it as long or I'll try it more frequently because it's been two weeks and I remember that the corn goes really quick and I should have thought of that so anyways we're not going to jump the gun maybe it's fine probably not because it was made out of the same batch <laughs> all right so nothing on top we are good on top here get our weight out Love these things. These are mason tops. This particular one I got from the workshop that I did at HOA with Off Grid with Diamond Daisy. They handed out um, these weights and these mason tops, weights and uh, pickle pipes, as they call them, pickle pucks and pickle pipes. And um, I already had a, a set of the wide mouth, but I never had any of the regular mouth. So I was really excited to get those ones while I was there. So thank you, safety. Okay, so we are gonna try it. This, okay, with her reaction, I kind of feel like I wanna take a small bite. <laughs> okay, all right, we're gonna give it a try. Oh, yeah, it's mushy. It's really fermented. It's actually not terrible. The texture is just the worst thing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to try this again, so I'll meet me back here on the flip side where we will have one that is properly fermented. We'll see if we can make this thing taste better. We are back, redone the chow chow, and I know that it works. I know that it's good because I tried it tonight on the live stream that we had. If you don't join me and you don't know about it, I go live every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so that would be what, 8 Eastern? And at least for now, I'm not promising to do it forever, but we tried this live on a live stream. It's delicious. So let's try it again. And I will tell you how I fixed the problem because the first one was nasty. Mm. Mm. Okay, so let's dig into this. So what I was able to fix, what did I do? I probably tripled the amount of cabbage that I put in there. I didn't ferment it for so long and I made sure to ferment it in a cooler place. The first time that I fermented it, I think that it, it was just in too warm of a place. We were in Hawaii and at least for the beginning part of the ferment for the first like five or six days, it was just too warm for the ferment. And then we had the travels back here and all of the things. So. I think that's probably part of what contributed it to it um, because I know my sister's was pretty funky too. Not funky, but it was definitely just, just over fermented. It was soggy. This one, I'll try and remember to leave in a little bit of the crunch on that one, at least a little bit. I'm not a fan of including chewing sounds because they drive me crazy, uh, which is why I was cutting them out. But this one, it has some serious crunch to it. So I did, yeah, it was three medium sized cabbages medium to small cabbages, I would say, um, like grapefruit size, three of those. And then, um, I also did a whole, um, and a whole onion, a whole green pepper, a whole red pepper, two small ears of corn. I think that was it whatever other spices and things um, were in the first video. It is delicious. I was not expecting it to have heat. There's a bit of a heat to it. It's very sour. It's delicious. This is one of my more, this is one of my favorite ferments actually, compared, especially compared to the nastiness that was the first one. Since I fixed this one and did the correct ratios, in my opinion, the correct ratios for my opinion, um, this one's way better. <laughs> the other one, I don't see how you could really call that one good because it was just gross. Mushy. So this one's delicious. So I totally recommend that you try my edited version with three reg three kind of smallish to medium cabbages. You could do like one and a half cabbages and I think you'd get the same amount. Um, 
and then all the other things. So I will still link the recipe down below so you can get a guide for it. Um, but just make sure you keep in mind, if you ferment it too hot, it's gonna get pretty soggy. If you ferment it too long or too quickly, um, the corn can really take hold and it can really make it soggy. And just make it just makes it ferment too quickly because of the, the carb content of it. So I would definitely recommend that you try this. Let me know down below if you guys plan to or if you have or any other delicious fermenting recipes that you guys think I should try. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Actually, it's down below here, right? Yeah, there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> Click that. And then they're also going to be one that's going to pop up like right here. So make sure you click that one too. And then also make sure that you guys check out these videos over here. And I think there's going to be one here, right around here. And then these ones up here. Make sure you check those ones out too. Those are awesome videos. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.